If you've got a gaming laptop with limited storage, you might want to consider an upgrade. In this video, I want to talk you through the process both of finding the right drive for your machine, actually installing it, uh, getting the drive initialized and up and running, and also covering if you want to replace your operating system drive instead, transferring your Windows license and copying over your old files. So without further ado, let's get started. The very first thing you will need to know is what drive to go and buy to fit in your machine. Some laptops are quite nicely configured in that they have a spare M.2 slot, or sometimes like this Acer Helios 300, actually have a spare two and a half inch drive slot as well. If you bought your laptop in the last couple of years and in uh, Windows Explorer under this PC, you have two drives listed. You're, you likely have a configuration of somewhere between 120 and a 500 gigabyte M.2 SSD and a one or two terabyte hard drive. If, however, you only have a single drive, then that's probably looking pretty good for a nice easy upgrade as that's likely only a single SSD. There is one catch to that, which is that some laptop manufacturers present one drive to you in Windows Explorer, but in fact, it's actually two drives in what's called RAID 0, where the data is split between both drives, meaning in theory it's a bit faster, but it's also technically more prone to error. If that is the case, you do not want to be upgrading those drives independently and you definitely need a backup of all of the data on those drives before you do anything with them as they cannot be read independently as the RAID is built into the system rather than into the drives themselves. To find out what your machine has, you will want to either take the machine apart, we're gonna need to do that anyway to install the new drive, so that's a good opportunity to familiarize yourself with the process, or if you would rather not, you can either look up the laptop model name you have plus the word teardown, as there's a good chance that someone on the internet has taken one apart and filmed it, or you can also head to the manufacturer's website or even your owner's manual, the manual that came in the box, uh, to see if it lists the configurations or if there's any free drives available. Now, since it's 2021 and all, I generally wouldn't recommend adding anything other than solid state drives to your machine. You have a couple of different options here. The first one is if you do have a one or two terabyte hard drive in your machine, you can swap that out for a different two and a half inch SSD, either with a similar capacity, or if you wanna save a bit and you don't use all that space, you could drop it down if you'd prefer, but those two and a half inch drives are getting insanely cheap, so I'll leave some links to them in the description down below if you wanna pick one up yourself. Your other option is an M.2 SSD. These are tiny little sticks that have all of the storage and controllers and DRAM on them that you need, which is fascinating considering that they're uh, a lot smaller than a standard two and a half inch drive. But these are often what you'll find as your operating system drive. And in this laptop's case, we actually have a spare slot to stick one of these in. There is two kinds of uh, M.2 SSD though. There are the SATA drives, which are kind of being phased out, but your, your laptop may only support SATA drives. So do check your manufacturer's website and their spec list to see if they, they list that. Acer does list this as a PCI Express connection for the solid state drive, meaning NVMe, which is the second option. And generally speaking, the way you can tell them apart is an NVMe drive has one little finger off to the side and two in total, whereas most SATA drives use the B plus M key, which has two fingers on either side of the main one for a total of three. Right, so assuming you know which drive you want and have one in hand, what's next? Well, the obvious answer is to get it installed. You will want to turn off the machine completely and unplug it both from the power source and anything else that you have connected. You can then flip it over and start undoing or removing the screws that you can find on the bottom. The configuration, the number, and if any are hidden under those pesky warranty void if removed stickers will vary depending on your laptop, but most laptops in the last few years, at least the ones that I've checked out, are relatively similar and relatively simple. So 
take them all out. I would recommend leaving all of the screws in the order that you took them out of the laptop. In my case, I leave them in the lid of my iFixit kit in the order because some of them are often different sizes and you don't want to accidentally put the wrong one in and puncture the top of your keyboard plates. Ask me how I know. Once all of the screws are out, the base plate is still likely clipped into the stand of the rest of the frame, and so you want to be gentle in prizing it up one clip at a time. You don't want to try and brute force it as you will break the clips. They are very small, very tiny, and very delicate. And using something like the plectrum pick you can get in the iFixit kit, or if you just play guitar, a plectrum uh, to get in that edge and gently prise it up is a good way to not damage the laptop instead of using say a flathead screwdriver which will mark the surface. Once you've prized the cover up the back section is often clipped in in a slightly different way and so it's a generally good idea to lift from the front of the laptop and wiggle it around a bit until it comes free. Again being careful to not just snap it clean off. Once it is off and out of the way though, you should then have access to your uh, solid state drives. If there's any spare M.2 slots, you'll have access to those and any two and a half inch drive baits. I'm gonna start by installing the M.2 SSD in our spare slot. The drive that I'm using is this Keoxia XG6P. Uh, it's a pretty impressive drive, you should check them out. I'll leave it linked in the description down below if you're interested. But uh, to install this, it's ridiculously simple. You remove the screw on the, the back side of this, this mount, uh, slide the drive in in the correct orientation, in this case with the sticker facing out, push it in and then flush with the board and put the screw back in and that's it installed. If you're installing a two and a half inch drive, then if you already have one in there, of course you will need to remove that first. So remove, in our case, the four screws that hold the bracket in, then you can remove your drive if there's one in there, or in our case, stick the drive in with some screws on the side. And in our case, because the drive, uh, the laptop didn't come with a two and a half inch drive installed, Acer actually includes the SATA power and data cable you would need in the box, so plug that in and plug it in to the motherboard so that it's powered and uh, connected via data, and then you can put the bracket back down and in and screw it in place. Once those are installed, you can then put the cover back on, clipping it in place gently, often starting with the back is how I find it goes together the easiest, then stick all of the screws back in, ideally in the same order they came out and in the same locations at very least, uh, and then you can flip the laptop back over, turn it back on and boot into Windows. You want to open this PC in Explorer, but if you don't see any new drives here, don't worry just yet. Head to the computer tab at the top and then click on manage. You'll then want to click on the disk management option in the left hand pane and you'll be presented with a pop-up window that will ask you to initialize your new drives. You should be able to just click next through this until it's done and then in the central section on the lower half you should see a new drive here with normally a big black bar across the full width of that section. You can right click on it and click new simple volume, again pressing next through the wizard. You can add a name to the volume if you want and then once it's done that should be your drive up and running. If you're planning on upgrading your operating system drive, in our case that would be our Windows C drive, it's a little bit more complicated. The first thing you will want to do is make sure that you have a backup of any of the important files that you want to transfer over to your new drive. If you have a second drive, like a hard drive, in your laptop and you've got space on it to copy those files, that is recommended, or copying it to a network attached storage device like a NAS, then again, that would be a good option. Although if you don't have space on your internal drive, don't have a second drive or a NAS, you can use an external caddy afterwards, so that's not the biggest of problems. You will also want to run the media creation tool that you can download from uh, Microsoft's website to create a bootable USB stick so we can install Windows on our new drive. Then, once that is all sorted, you will want to find your Windows 10 license key. 
This will likely be in the box with your laptop along with the rest of the documents because we'll need that to activate the new copy of Windows we'll be installing on the new drive. Once you have that license key available, you can then uninstall the license key from your current system. That will free the license key up to be used with uh, a new system, a new copy of Windows. And you can do that by opening command prompt, by opening the start menu, typing CMD, and then right clicking on command prompt and running as admin, and then run the command slmgr.vbs space uh, slash upk. That will remove the license key or uninstall the product key, as UPK stands for, from your system. Again, freeing it up so when we go to install Windows later, you can use it without problem. You can then follow the same steps as before to install your new drive. In this case, you would just remove the screw that holds your current drive in, remove that drive, and then install the new one. And then we can boot from our USB stick. You want to plug it in, turn on the PC, and normally you're pressing either F2 or F12 or even delete to get into the BIOS and then set your boot priority to be the USB stick, gets booted from first, boot to the USB stick and boot to the installer, run through the standard setup, clicking custom installation, clicking on your new uninitialized drive uh, and click the new button down at the bottom right to uh, initialize the drive and create all of the volumes we need. And then you can go through the standard installation process. You will want to use your product key to activate Windows and of course make sure you select the right version for the product key you have and then we should be up and running. Now, if you weren't able to copy over any of your files from your original drive, whether that's from a two and a half inch hard drive or your old Windows SSD, you can use an external USB caddy to copy those over. This one is an M.2 caddy from Sabrent. It's a USB-C drive and is actually ridiculously fast. And all you do is open it up, drop your old drive in, plug it in, and it works just like a standard USB stick would. You can drag and drop all of your files and it makes it nice and easy. So that's the process for upgrading the storage in your gaming laptop. Of course, this has been a general guide, so if you have any more specific questions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below, and myself and the amazing community that watch these videos will do our best to help you out. I'm gonna leave links to all of the parts and tools that I've been talking about in the description. Those will be Amazon affiliate links that will take you to your local Amazon store, where you can see pricing when and where you watch this, and maybe pick them up yourself. If you have uh, any suggestions for other videos like this or any suggestions for uh, ways to improve the process of upgrading your storage, feel free to leave those in the comments as well. If you want to see more videos like this one on a Monday, Wednesday and Friday basis, then hit that subscribe button and the bell notification icon. You can also support the channel in a load of different ways, including the new YouTube join button where you get access to our Money Men Discord chat, sponsor free videos and some cool emojis to use in the comments and on our live streams. You can also support on Patreon instead if you prefer to do that, that's linked in the description as well. There's also merch readies or t-shirts like this one uh, or a load of other designs and there's affiliate links with places like Overclock GK if you're buying them there, a load of VPN options, Hubble Bundle, Streamlabs OBS and a whole lot more so do feel free to check it out. There will be some more videos on the end cards, maybe take a look at the Helios review if you haven't already and that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed us, we'll see you on the next video.